going to try this again um, with some better audio setups here. In case you can't tell, this is me. But I've been wearing my hat all day long. And I got my true dark glasses on. So can somebody just type, I hear you, just so I know this is actually working. Let's watch and say, hello, I can hear you, anybody, please. Before I talk for the next 15, 20 minutes. Those that are, are watching right now, could you just say, yep, if you can hear me? Please. <laughs> Anybody. I'm so paranoid about, about that because um, I have done many of these before, and I've literally gone the whole time, and people are like, I didn't hear one word you said because I just saw your lips moving. So... Someone, I'm just waiting for one person. Okay, thank you. Praise the Lord. All right, so um, what I'm going to be talking about, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what we're going to be talking about here are, this is really um, my top 10 ways that um, I feel like give have given me the best advantage in terms of taking my health to um, the next level and it being sustainable. And, and really, not, we're not even just talking about like, oh, this is, you know, we're not, it's beyond just like losing weight and um, you know, feeling good, but it's really tapping into your ultimate level of um, productivity and um, being able to get stuff done. So I, I want to go through a few things. Uh, hopefully, it doesn't sound too um, uh, braggadocious uh, with it, but it really, it, I just want, um, to give you a quick little glimpse of my life, you know, for the past uh, three months, and then just to help you realize that the only way that I pulled this off, the only way that I pulled off what I pulled off over the last three months and really the last 10 years of my life is because of the, t the next 10 things that I'm going to go through. So, um, of course, you know, continuing to uh, maintain and run a um, a uh, super busy practice, you know, we, we are, are delivering you know, well over 400, you know, 400 adjustments every single week. We have, you know, eight, six, seven, eight hundred people um, that uh, report to us regularly, if you will, for, for care. It's just a lot of moving parts there. Um, so just within that business, you know, it's, it's maintaining uh, seven, eight, you know, um, now really 10 employees, um, you know, with that. And, uh, you know, not only having clinic hours, but having administrative hours with that. Um, that, you know, sometimes will start as early as seven in the, in, in the morning and goes as late as eight o'clock at night. Um, I took a massage business from literally just an idea and we executed, uh, you know, we had our first uh, weekend of massages. So I, I built a, a little piece of that business from scratch to full blown. We have uh, over 30 people enrolled in that massage program now um, in less than six weeks. And um, on top of that, uh, last year started a, a hemp seed business or you know, with, with some help some, with some friends or, you know, kind of joined in with the hemp seed business. Um, in the last couple of months, um, we are put just mega amounts of legwork into getting a, our, helping a regenerative medicine clinic in the area here get up and running. Um, on top of that, I'm writing a weight loss program with Heather, uh, you know, staying back who works in our office. Um, what else am I doing uh, from there? So I uh, started a consulting business. Um, I haven't really done a ton of this, but helped a little bit with my wife, wife um, you know, getting uh, her doula business up and running. Um, on top of that, still doing functional medicine uh, training on a regular basis. 
on top of that, still find time to exercise two to five times per week. Um, and, uh, you know, I could, and then of course, you know, still find time to spend with my family. In fact, I'm taking my daughter on a, uh, I have a date, you know, afternoon with my wife every Friday. I have a date with my daughter on Saturday night. And so just pulling off, this, you know, in my opinion, and I really didn't really realize this until some other people, uh, you know, said, like, this, this, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, like pulling off some insane stuff. So the only way that that happens, again, this is not to be just brag, brag, brag. The only way that I'm able to do all that and not be, fatigued, exhausted, dead, or just not being able to do it is because of these 10 things, all right? So I'm going to just light right into them. Um, they're not necessarily in any super specific particular order, but uh, here we go. So um, number one is um, get adjusted, all right? And w without question, um, that is my number one secret sauce to productivity. Um, I have been a chiropractic patient now for um, over half of my life, so I've been adjusted over longer than I have not been adjusted, and it's rare if ever that I have any pain. In fact, I mean, I, I might have some stiffness or soreness, you know, like less than five days um, out of the year, so, but I still get adjusted a minimum of once per week um, because I just find that my mind is clear, um, and my body stays relaxed, um, my um, energy stays um, elevated. Um, and really that is a, a, an anchor for all other things that revolve around my health and, and, you know, go figure the nervous system is what controls every single function of the body. So it's no surprise that, um, that has to be the foundation of it. So I have moved way beyond getting adjusted to, you know, feel better. And it is now 100% or 99.9% .9 in my body to operate at peak performance to make sure I'm getting the best rest, have the best energy, the clearest mental thoughts. And um, if you are not in that space, if you're still stuck in sort of the stiffness, pain, achiness model only for adjustments, was well, hang in there. You haven't been getting adjusted long enough or you have not uh, been adjusted often enough or you don't do enough rehab around your adjustments to be able to get the most out of them. Okay, so that, that's number one. Um, number, number two is you got to, uh, um, the sleep routine has to be dialed in, okay? If you notice, again, I got my true dark, my blue, my blue light blocker glasses on right now. Why? Because I don't want to be plummeting my melatonin um, resources right now because that's what uh, the light coming off my computer, even the lights in my room would be doing that right now. Um, and um, also elevating my cortisol levels, which put the body in a fight or flight situation, which it is almost impossible to calm down and relax when, when cortisol levels are elevated like that. So if you're not resting um, and getting um, not only quantity of sleep, but high quality sleep, then there's no way your mind is going to be able to stay focused. It's not going to be able to, to um, efficiently complete tasks. It's not going to be able to be at high performance, peak performance um, throughout the day. So you got to get that sleep. And not to mention on top of that, if you're not sleeping, your body's not regenerating, you're aging faster, you're breaking down, your body's more insulin resistant, um, it's it's going to be more inflamed. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on and on, okay? So I did a little uh, Facebook Live a couple nights ago um, on melatonin, and uh, a lot of people uh, watch that, and they're like, oh, just sleep, sleep, sleep. And yes, melatonin has to do with sleep, but go back and watch that, because if all you walked away from that video was like, oh, melatonin's good for sleep and confirming that, um, then you missed the whole point because that was like the lowest hanging fruit um, for that. So um, next one is to uh, eliminate activities and people. Yes, people that, that drain your energy and your happiness and your joy. It is very rare that um, I engage with people that are um, not going to be elevating my level of positivity, energy, mood, happiness, and um, you know, level of success. A long time ago, I deleted about 75 names and numbers on my phone um, as a recommendation for my mentor. And at the time, it was really kind of scary, nerve-wracking, and confusing. But I can tell you, um, shoot, what was that? Uh, probably actually 12 years now. Like I do, it, it, I do not miss it whatsoever. I do not get um, you know texts or phone calls for, um, or messages from people that are going to bring me out of a state of um, positivity. And productivity, um, I just, I, they're gone, right? And um, now I, my circle of um, influence and influencers has shrunk tremendously. 
um, for that. But guess what? I also have way more time be, uh, to engage with those people too. So you also have to eliminate activities too um, um, out of that. So I, you know, if you're if you're finding yourself constantly doing things that are bringing you out of a state of productivity, joy, and health and happiness, and a high level of vibration, then um, start cutting out the things that don't do that. And I know that that sounds you know easier said than done. But it's amazing how I see so many people freaking self-sabotaging. You know, they're, they're literally doing, in the moment, doing the thing that they hate and complain about it with the same breath. And it's like, why have you not figured out and solved the way yet in order to um, either delegate that or, I mean, even better yet, hopefully eliminate it. Now, if it's paying taxes, I wouldn't suggest uh, eliminating that. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. So my friend in my circle of influence just texted me and said, Greg, you look retarded. Well, um, at least I'm not frying and melting my brain like you are right now watching me on your phone. I'm not wearing your blue light locker. So I'll be Josh. Um, so um, yeah, it's good to call your, your circle of friends up there too on, on top of that. So um, eliminate activities and people that drain your energy and drain your happiness as well. So next one is exercise um, you gotta move all right motion creates um, energy and it creates um, positivity and I'm not even talking about crossfitting or, or doing triathlons or whatever it's like you just got to be moving um, your body like crazy so move your body if you are not happy if you're not having high levels of energy I can almost bet you are not moving on a regular basis okay next one is targets um, have something to focus on so if you are not waking up um, every single day with um, not a to-do list, but a target list, so um, uh, it, just an easy um, way that I can use this as an analogy is that if you're in sales, like if you're not waking up, and by the way, if you are a human being, you are in sales of some kind, and how, what I mean by that is that even if you're a teacher, right, you, you're waking up and you have to sell your um, students on them wanting to be excited to learn on the material that you're uh, um, about about to teach, right? If you're a stay-at-home mom, <laughs> okay, right, you have to um, sell your uh, husband on you know doing the dishes or whatever, or to sell your children on you know picking up their toys, right? You are in sales if you are a human being that exists on planet Earth. So uh, that's a little a little bit of a digression, but. Let's just say specifically you aren't you aren't like actually in sales. Like if you don't wake up and you don't know the five places that you are going to call or stop in or the ten people that you're going to call to try to sell, you know what it is. Like you are likely going to have uh, um, a, a failure of a day. So, um, but another target might be is your target is going to be I'm going to wake up and I okay I'm going to um, let's say you're a stay at home when you, you you're a homeschool teacher. Like I'm going to nail this lesson plan. We are going to do this this and this and then we're going to do that. You got to have those targets and goals because they will keep your mind active. They will keep your reticular activating system um, in search mode. And if you don't know what your reticular activating system is, it's a part of your subconscious and your brain that is like kind of like the Google search engine. So if you've ever um, decided that you wanted to buy a new car, if and you're all with me on that. In fact, hit a like button if you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Is that all of a sudden you start seeing that? exact make and model car driving around around you and you're like holy smokes like let's say you want to buy a red uh bmw and it's like next thing all of a sudden you see red bmws everywhere well guess what it's not like red bmws just magically popped up but your reticular activated activating system became aware of the fact that um it's consciously that you are now in search of that and it will begin to help you find the visual and the actionable cues to help you accomplish that so what does that mean uh, in context of like health and energy? That if you um, dis make it, truly make a decision in your subconscious that you are now going to um, you know uh, lose weight, then guess what? Next thing you know, you start um, finding little articles that pop up on your Facebook feed, and that might just be because Facebook is listening to you. I don't know, but it, it does work this way. Or you might find all of a sudden a a friend at work that it, you overhear them talking about this new challenge that they started or this new workout class or whatever it is and guess what those people were having those same conversations around you all this time but now your reticular activating system is tuned in and honed in subconsciously to in order to activate and find those things um, that are working so targets and focus um, next one is uh, dialing in your supplements so this 
moves beyond just like, oh, you just take a pantry full of supplements um, on a regular basis, um, but it's actually dialing in and doing testing to figure out exactly um, what your body needs and that make sure that you are doing everything possible to meet the needs of your body. So um, you know, an easy low-hanging fruit example would be that if you, um, you, know, you do testing, nutrient testing, find out you're low in three vitamins, right, three minerals. It's like you just hone in and focus on making sure that you are meeting the needs of those um, nutrients to help your body run at peak performance. So dialing in your supplements with specificity. Um, next one is release valves. So, um, you know, even though it's go, 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 and, you know, working, you know, gosh, I don't even know, probably 70, um, maybe even 80 uh, hours in a week, um, if I kind of stack it all up. Um, you got to then have things where certain moments you just pull the plug and you do something that like is a brain drain. Okay. In a good way. Like maybe you just watch some dumb movie on Netflix or, uh, you know, maybe for me for a while, you know, up until a couple years ago it was, you know, playing video games, right? Like just things that where it's like, no matter what in the moment, that was all my brain could singularly focus on. And I wasn't thinking about, um, other things. So, um, you got to have release valves too, or otherwise your brain's always going to be go, 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 and it'll never wind down. And um, you got to you got to pull the plug and pull the pin a little bit um, every now and then. So uh, next one is switching to realizing that food goes beyond um, pleasure and you turn food into fuel, all right? Um, and I, I would say that at a minimum, 80% of the time, food should be looked at as fuel and, and nothing else. Um, so I was having a, a consult um, with one of my patients, a uh, young girl just starting her career out um, in, um, in cosmetology or, or, you know, working with hair and all that kind of stuff too. And she was talking about how certain times, like, you know, her business time frame is like during lunch because that's when a lot of people, you know, they're, they're off or they've got a gap. And so, of course, they're filling in, you know, when, where you know, she would normally be having her lunch. And so I, I told her, I'm like, listen, sometimes for you, it might mean you have three minutes behind, uh, um, in order to, uh, in between a client, right? Like scarf down a half an avocado with some sprinkled some salt on it. Is it, uh, is it super glamorous? No. Is it super foody? No, it's the, the opposite of it, of it. However, you are giving your body fuel to perform because she was talking about how she gets tired a lot between like, you know, three, four, five o'clock and the afternoon as you know her day is winding down and I'm like well if you're getting the right fuel midday to keep that going you don't have to worry about that so um, doesn't mean that food can't be um, you know super fun and creative and you know all these spices and all these like presentations and whatever you know or an, a, a really elaborate sit down meal or, or out to eat meal you, know, you can still do that but I would say at least 80% of the time your food should be purely fuel simple simplistic get it get it in um, and, and, and move on and get on with, with your life. Okay. Um, next one is, um, intermittent fasting kind of goes along with that. And so, um, this, this really for me personally has a multitude of, um, of benefits. Number one, um, getting up and going in the morning. If I don't have to spend five, 10 or 15 minutes, uh, making breakfast, like I can get into my day that much faster and that much more efficiently. So, um, huge, um, uh, to do that. So um, that and then next thing is along with that too is that when you wake up and you're not bogging, especially for a lot of people, like your, your most carb-heavy um, meal of the day tends to be your breakfast, right? Because you're having stupid bagels or, um, you know, toast or, or cereal or oatmeal or just re retarded stuff that like are absolutely going to sap your energy, okay? Um, by eliminating that, uh, most of you uh, – that's just you actually have dessert for breakfast more than anything um right like if you if you cut that out okay you're going to skyrocket your energy that way so you're eliminating a big source of carb drain blood sugar you know drain and all that kind of stuff um so um you're doing that but also what happens is that when you wake up and you know you, you've essentially been fasting um since you last ate dinner right so your body has started burning through the majority of your glycogen storage, right, which is stored in your liver, is what your liver will, will hold on to for, you know, uh, 12 to 24 hours to release and give you sugar on, on, a, on short notice. When you get rid of that, you burn through the majority of your glycogen storage, you get up, you don't eat anything, 
then as you go through your morning, your body is going to run out of glycogen stores and it's going to start utilizing your fat stores for energy. Well, the cool thing is, is that um, fat will give you twice as many calories of energy. So just think of twice as much energy per molecule as you'll get from carbohydrates. So you technically have the ability to, like, around by lunchtime, be operating at double amounts of energy um, compared to if your body was trying to run off of carbs or sugar. And then the last one is always asking the question, um, what's next, okay? And I, I will tell you the reason why most people um, get in a rut, they get bored with being healthy or they get bored with the recommendations that it was maybe once working with them is that you stopped asking the question, what's next? Great for you. Let's say you lost all the weight. Um, awesome. Or let's say you are taking all the vitamins or let's say you are, you are doing um, the exercise on a regular basis or, or let's say you wake up and you feel great every single day. The minute you stop asking the question, what's next, what's the next area that I need to focus on, um, then you, you will begin to backslide and you will begin to fail, right? And you're potentially missing out on identifying the thing that might add one more quality of year on your life if you implement it right now, okay? So always asking the question, what's next? That's been my, that was my motto for uh, 2019. Um, and it's not that you're in a state of restlessness about it, but it's, it's, it's a state of um, always looking to transcend and get um, better and that's really should be in every area of your life too it's easier that to, to do in, one, in some areas than others um, but especially with your health I think it's really easy to always be asking the question what next and guess what if you don't know what next should be then find an expert find a mentor find somebody that knows more about um, health than you do and have them help you ask the question you know or, or tell you what it is next that you should be um, working on so that's what it is so real fast again it's get adjusted dial in your sleep uh, and uh, nighttime routine eliminate activities and people that drain your energy happiness um, and focus um, move your body you got to exercise um, have targets and specific areas uh, to focus on each and every single day um, dial in your supplements and move beyond just general take you know, a handful of supplements and making sure it's precisely what your body needs to move to the next level. Making sure that you're having uh, release valves or ways to unplug. Um, making sure that at least 80% of your meals um, are food for fuel and that's it. Okay, so simplicity and just making sure that your immediate need is to energize your body and that's it. Um, intermittent fasting and the last one is always asking um, what's next. I hope you guys got some some um, enjoyment out of this and uh, you know maybe just pick a couple areas out of those top 10 that you can focus on getting better on uh, here in 2020 and uh, I'll do my best to uh, keep bringing these videos and giving value to guys you guys as often as I can. Peace out.